This video is pretty much an updated version of a very old tutorial video I made like two years back. That video is pretty much me explaining what I called the new sparking system way back when, and it's very outdated and very old and I highly recommend you don't watch it, especially because the information is very outdated, which is what this video is made to do. It's made to talk about all of the new stuff that happened with the system, talk about the certain kind of updates and the changes. It's changed so much that the name is now CyberSpark. So yeah, let's waste no more time and get right into it. We're gonna talk about the lower parts and make our way to the higher parts. And make sure you stick around because there's a lot of info here and if you skip any, then you might make something that's kind of stinky. So by lower parts, I of course mean the bottom parts of the Beyblades. And in CyberSpark, we now have two different kinds. We have tips and bits. And of course, bits are for X and we'll talk about these later. For tips, there's not a whole lot to really say about. That is dirty, ew. But besides that, tips are possibly the most basic part of this system. Just having a two x two connection to the chassis. And then the height of these things is around four to five plates tall on average. Of course, you can go higher and you can go lower, but to avoid poor balance and scraping a lot, you'd want to go around the four or five plate range. Bits are pretty much the exact same thing as tips, but as you can see, I added a circle plate at the bottom. And this circle plate actually does change the burst resistance. There are two different kinds of circle plates, and I decided to take advantage of that by doing something like this. For bits that have tight burst resistance, so for instance, we have flat and we have taper, I use these kinds of circle plates that have this sort of macaroni style at the bottom, which grips onto the studs on the ratchet a lot better. But then for low burst resistance bits, such as ball and needle, at the bottom we have the original kinds of circle plates with these sort of flat insides, and they have a looser connection to the ratchet. That's pretty much all I really need to say about tips, so let's just move on to the chassis and the ratchets. And we have a lot to talk about here, so stick with me. Let's talk about ratchets first, because this will be a lot easier and shorter to talk about. Building ratchets is very simple. I have plenty of how to build Beyblade X videos that I have made, so you guys can go to those videos and check them out to know how to build these guys more in depth. But they're very simple. You have this circle 4x4 with a 2x2 circle in the middle. It has to be this kind of piece or else it won't work. Then you have a 4x4 bracket going around it. And then for the contacts, it's generally a bracket octagon shape, which is something like this. Think Blaze Taurus, basically, except the tiles on them are replaced with sometimes some studs to represent the kinds of ratchet they are. So for three-sided ratchets, you have these three studs, and for four sides, you have all jumpers. For other kinds of ratchets, it would probably change, but I haven't quite built them or reviewed them yet. But hopefully in time, I'll be able to release more X-Bays with more ratchets. Anyway, so the middle part right here is a circle plate with a 2x2 plate at the bottom, and this is a very integral part of the system. This is because this kind of center will be able to fit, of course, studded Beyblades just like this, but because 2x2s have this little sort of tube at the bottom, it'll have clearance for an axle to go all the way through. Make sure whenever you build a middle part like this, it has to have something that resembles this thing. So anyways, you take this thing, you put it in, and then you seal it off with some macaroni tiles. These keep it all in place, and it pretty much works the same at the top. This sort of circle kind of thing sandwiches the 2x2 plate and makes it nice and sturdy. For 80 height ratchets, it's pretty much the exact same thing with a another 4x4 circle plate underneath. And 70 height isn't really possible because there's no piece that's in between the height of a plate, so... Yeah, 60 and 80, that's pretty much all we have so far. But you can of course put the bits on there, like no problem. You cannot put tips on there, unfortunately. You can't put tips on chassis, which we're going to start talking about now. There's a lot to talk about with these things, so stick with me here. Chassis almost always have to be 4x4 brackets because it's the really only way I know of to have this sort of assembly inside to make sure that everything will be compatible. There are some ways you can work around it, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's talk about the 4x4 chassis. Starting off very basic with a 4x4 plate with a 2x2 hole in the center, and then you have a 4x4 bracket going along the outside. Of course, we'll put on our contact points. In this point, it is a 1D chassis, so I'll just put on the 1D contact points. Okay, there we go, we got that. And we'll put this off to the side, and then we'll build the bottom. So we'll start with this guy right here, and then at the bottom, we'll add our parts for burst resistance. For defense chassis, such as 1D, you want to have two studs in the middle for burst resistance. So I'll just finish building this here, put it at the bottom, 
And there we go, we have 1D. But for attack type chassis, you want three studs, and this is because the tip will be able to cling on better, and the Beyblade won't burst from its own attack power, which did happen a lot before this patch. Now, here's the only example of a chassis that isn't a 4x4 bracket. So this is 1S, and it's pretty much just a circle. But even though this isn't a 4x4 bracket, if we take this off and remove the center circle plate, you'll see a hole right here, and this is where the axle can go through. As you can see, we grab an axle bay, still able to go all the way through. This is one of the reasons why things like 2x4 uh, chassis won't work, because they won't have this kind of circle in the middle. And even if you make the chassis taller, it'll have a weird gap, and you don't really want that. You also want to make sure that at the very least, there is a 4x4 kind of flat surface right here, so when you put on a studded bay, there won't be any intrusions on the connection. And for parts like 1S, that still holds true because the top is completely flat. So with how to build the normal chassis out of the way, let's talk about something that I haven't reviewed yet, but I might as well cover right now just for the sake of it. Judging by my upload schedule, it'll be a while before I cover high chassis and low chassis. So let's talk about them right now. High chassis is very simple. Essentially, you're just building a chassis like normal, except you're putting another row of plates underneath the connection to the tip. The bottom it has this kind of octagon shape, and of course you have your two studs here for your burst resistance. And if you're making an attack type chassis, you'll obviously have a third stud right there. You don't need to go this extra mile to make it taller. Really what you can do is just take a normal chassis, put a 4x4 plate under these parts right here, and call it a day. As for low chassis, however, you do want to follow this pretty much exactly. You want to start off with a shape that's very similar to the ratchets with this circle thing right here. Again, has to be a circle. You have your 4x4 bracket surrounding it. And then at the bottom, you have these tiles right here. The tiles are placed on in a kind of brick style to keep everything nice and secure. And then in the center gap, you want to build this little thing. Again, very similar to the center bit on all of the chassis and ratchets. It's a very integral part of the system, except the piece itself is half tile, half plate. However, it still does have that tube, so it'll be compatible with everything. And then you just take that, you slide this on top, and then it sort of just sits on top of the middle part like that. And it connects on like normal, and you can still put a tip on there, and yeah, this looks cursed, but hey, it works. Unfortunately, you won't be able to give it three studs for burst resistance for attack chassis, since using one of those L-shaped plates will block the center and axle bays cannot connect. But since it has these kinds of walls surrounding the middle, it should be okay. And finally, let's talk about the blades. First of all, I want to cover this really quick. Studded and axled bays, you probably heard me mention these already in the video. But what exactly are they? Studded bays are Beyblades that have this at the bottom, a 4x4 tile surface with a 2x2 in the middle, so it can connect to the chassis just like that. Axled bays are Beyblades that have an axle connection like this that sticks out around one plate as you can see that's like a one plate height right there and it can stick on to any chassis just like that again that's why we need that two by two there i wonder how many times i mentioned that in this video but now that we have that out of the way let's talk about the kinds of subsystems i have because as of this year i have three what <laughs> so first up we have standard cyber spark or sc so these blades are just pretty much whatever you want as long as they have one of these two connections at the bottom, it'll work. And you've guys seen my videos, you know that all sorts of things can fit on. You can fit on 2x4 brackets, 5-bladed bays, 6-bladed, um, H-bracket stuff, this Tetris piece looking thing, whatever the hell this is. Pretty much any shape you can make is compatible with the system, which is pretty much the main selling point of it. And we'll cover the x Beyblades as well because they are pretty much the same as standard CyberSpark, but they have a boat set on top and the contact points are mainly light bluish gray. But of course, if you want it to represent painted metal, yeah, you make it another color. And I call these Beyblades CX, or Cyber X, just to categorize it better, I guess. I don't know. And needless to say, any shape is compatible. You got h bracky, you got three sides, whatever. And of course, you know, for the BX Beyblades, you need the boat stud for other baits you don't. I just put the boat stud on there because it looks cool. I don't know. And finally, let's talk about the turn system base, or TS. Now the point for this system is that the chips um, correspond to the spin direction of the Beyblade. Although admittedly, there's nothing physical that's stopping you from launching this left spin or this right spin, but like, I made it when I was 14, so shut up. Let's talk about the basic framework of the chips because apparently people don't know how to build these things, and they are fairly simple. So pretty much what you have here is a circle plate, 
And then you have these 1x2 plates, and then these L-shaped plates right here on both sides. Then at the bottom you have these tiles right here to help give it some stability. Now this is the shape for right spin chips, for left spin chips it's the same thing but mirrored. And for dual spin chips it's literally just a 2x4 chip and you got a 2x2 jumper at the bottom for the connection. For the shapes of the blades you have these downwards facing brackets on these sides, you have a 2x4 right here, at the bottom you have the studded bay connection, and then you have these upwards facing brackets on these remaining sides. These tabs on the chips right here is what connects to them like that. And depending on the layout of the plates on here, that's what determines the spin direction for the blade. When the gaps are on these two sides, that's for right spins. When the gaps are on these corners, that's for left spins. And when the gaps are in all four corners, that's for every single kind of chip, of course, including dual spin chips. That doesn't mean that when you put a dual spin chip on a left spin or right spin base, that makes the Beyblade dual spin. Think of it like chips in GT, for example, where you can put dual spin chips on right spin bases, but that doesn't mean you can make them dual spin. It just goes to show how weird and unnecessary the system was, but again, it was a 2021 thing, and I thought it was cool in 2021. With that aside, that's pretty much all I have to say about this system. I did try to keep this concise. I hope I didn't miss anything, although, Knowing my memory, I probably did. Yeah, so I, I did forget something. I should have started editing this, so... I know I didn't go over specifically how to make these Beyblades, but I do have some tutorials on how to make your own shapes, and I do have some LEGO Beyblade X tutorials, so... Uh, if you want to build some of these bays, uh, go watch those. So uh, now back to your regularly scheduled me. So yeah, with that, comment, like, subscribe, stuff like that, and I'll see you in the next video.